there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? Disney's original Toy Story has a special place in cinema history due to the fact that it was the first production to be made entirely by computer animation instead of the standard hand-drawn method. It sets a new industry norm with this filmmaking style and eventually digital became the accepted form for cartoons. But it was not only the then fresh computerized look of the feature that turned it into the box office gold that it is today. The story focusing on the camaraderie between its lead playthings contributed to the success of these films as well. Everyone, Bonnie made a friend in class. Oh, she's already making friends. No, no, she literally made a new friend. I want you to meet Forky. The latest edition, the fourth in the series, finds the famous toys of the franchise band together to help a new friend in their ranks come to terms with who he is. Just a toy. And it looks like the on-screen friendship of the 3D figures rubbed off to the voice actors who found it hard to part ways with their allies after the movie wrapped up. You're Bonnie's toy. You are going to help create happy memories that will last for the rest of her life. Huh? What? Oh, yeah. yeah. I felt less pressure after the movie was, when we finished the movie, even before people saw it. I love the movie and I love the world and the characters and I feel like the, the cast and the crew did an incredible job. So uh, I was so happy with it a month ago. And so this is icing on the cake. I just love that people are embracing it and um, it just feels great. What are you doing here? No time to explain. Come with me. We need to get back to our kid. But as actors leave the characters behind as they exit the voice recording booths, eager audiences are already lining in front of the box office to meet them in theaters. Aren't we going to Bonnie? We show up at these sessions about once every six months or eight months and they go on for a few hours. Uh, and I didn't realize I, I had finished, but I turned over the card. I said the last last line on the microphone and they said okay that's it thanks and I said really that's it my lip began to quiver a little bit and I said oh my oh 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 my 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 and then it was done but uh, there's still an awful lot of ex uh, discovery to make because we we haven't seen these films and when we see them we're just as gobsmacked as anybody in the audience you know You've handled this lost toy life better than I could. Open your eyes, Woody. There's toy Story is still one of the few franchises that has not been diluted through sequels. And the fans don't mind visual advancements as much as they mind the essence of its story. After all, it's about presenting positive role model characters. And the technology is only the medium for the message. I being this hard. Woody, somebody's whispering in your ear. And here to tell us whether Toy Story 4 is a worthy addition to the saga is film critic Griffin Schiller. Griffin, good to have you with us on our show today. So some thanks critics... For, thanks for having me on. Some critics said that Toy Story 4 is the weakest link in the series. Do you agree with that? Um, well, I mean, to put it simply, I mean, everyone's going to have their own opinion on the film. But for me personally, I... No, I, I, I don't. I actually find this to be one of my favorites in the series, uh, either tied for first or, or right close underneath it. And I think um, it speaks to how relatable I think the story is and, and how needed I think the story was. Um, even even after that perfect conclusion in the, uh, the, the third chapter. But... Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think it's a great movie. It's got a lot of great comedy. It's got a lot of um, genuine heart to it. It's got a brisk pace, so it doesn't feel like you're in the theater for too long. I wonder why they needed a fourth addition to the series. I mean, why do you think it was so yeah. necessary? Yeah, I, I, I mean, like the, the way that, uh, you know, director Josh Cooley and the producers have, have kind of been throwing it around and, and having spoken to them myself, uh, their big thing is, Toy Story 3 is the perfect conclusion to uh, Andy's journey with these toys. And so that is, you know, Andy saying goodbye and it's time for them to turn a new chapter. Um, and so the the idea for a fourth Toy Story actually came about when they were still wrapping up Toy Story 3. So th this is something that's actually been in the de in development for quite some time. Um, and so 
Yeah, and so we get to this fourth one, and you realize it's about Woody kind of trying to find his place in life after Andy, um, in in what he's trying to do now that his purpose is fulfilled. He's trying to find new purpose in life, and I think that will be especially resonant with those who kind of have grown up with the franchise, and so. That's kind of why what I appreciate most about this film and the films in general is that each installment, um, you know, if you grew up with with the Toy Story films like myself, each installment kind of hits you at a, a certain chapter in your life. And for this film in particular, uh, it's hit me at a point in transition. And so maybe a lot of the uh, affection that I have for it comes from the personal baggage I carry in. But I. I I, I'm. I'll go out there and I'll say I'm not the only one who's going to be able to relate to a lot of the uh, the character journeys in this film. Mm -hmm. And there are some new characters. I wonder what you think about them. Mm. Uh, I absolutely. You know, I'll, I'll go. I'll say this. I think that out of all the Toy Stories, you know, each Toy Story has kind of brought about new sets of characters when they've come out. I think this one. Uh, delivers the, they utilize these new, new characters the best. Uh, I, I think Key and Peele uh, playing uh, Ducky and Bunny are, are absolutely hysterical. They have several scene stealing moments. They're going to get a lot of laughs. Uh, they, they actually probably give me some of the, the best comedic moments in the film. Uh, Duke Kaboom, Keanu Reeves are having a little bit of a Keanu sense here, and this just adds to it. He is so delightful is he's got a really interesting arc but also it just keanu reeves just fully commits and he gives a, brings a lot of charisma to the role uh christina hendrix as gabby gabby uh, who is sort of the antagonist in the film i don't want to say too much without giving anything away but she has a, a surprisingly layered and complex arc which i very much appreciated and that's one of the instances what they do something with the villain that we don't see a lot in in animated films in general um and then forky you know we've seen him all over the marketing and rightfully so because i think a lot of people are going to be talking about him walking out of the film uh people are going to be quoting trash it's a it's a catchphrase that he says and it, it kind of alludes to you know, you know his his origins a little bit and I, I think tony hale just kind of braces the the manic and overwhelmed nature of the character and and forky surprisingly is someone i think a lot of people are going to emotionally resonate with uh just from the the journey he goes on and and the, the emotions he's feeling mm -hmm. film critic griffin schiller yeah. good to have you with us on our show today thanks so much for having me